gentlemen, we are just about to start uh, our last uh, scheduled press conference here at Globsec. It's <coughs> a pleasure to welcome here uh, Mr. Jean-Louis Bouget, eminent European person and anterior expert of Council of Europe from Strasbourg, and Mr. Sebastian von Minfo, uh, lecturer of security studies on international and European law at the George Marshall European Center for Security Studies. And he, as a government official, he worked for several years in the Federal Chancellery, where he dealt with questions related to security issues, parliamentary oversight, and terrorism. Gentlemen, it's your turn. Great to have you all. Good luck with the program. Thank you. Well, you can come forward. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Just some remarks. Question about the problems of financing terrorism, which is maybe right now with uh, uh, the new attack in Europe, in France, and in Brussels, a crucial issue because it was not possible, of course, to carry out such operations to finance uh, certain groups. Because my, my expectation that I think we have more than 50 percent, or no, all, all the groups had not been demantled at that time and maybe between 50 and maybe 100 people, that's a lot. And so that's mean to have, to have resources, to have money. And the problem of financing is crucial. It's very important to make a difference for me, according to my experience, about what we have you know, in Syria and, and, and uh, in the core, you know, and, and, and Iraq. We have a lot of money. You know. Daesh succeeded to have an unprecedented amount of money several billion of US dollars that not seen before. But in fact, you know, the cells operating outside, you know, the networks implied involved in, t in operations to, you know, to detect, you know, the targets, to organize, you know, the operations, to uh, uh, f have a safe house, to have, uh, you know, ammunition, rifle, and so on. That's a financial, is a small financing system. And this financing system is, you know, con comes from criminality. The connection between the terrorists and criminality is not very new. You know, I, we have experienced it before, before. And the problem, you know, and all this money comes not from, some comes from South Syria, not really, because it's very difficult to transfer money. They know that they have monitored by any system, the US, the French, the others have the facility to connect and to monitor the, the, uh, uh, the financial market, the financial the bank. So they found money, you know, on locally. And, and, and they have many, many means for that. You know, the burglars, you know, the frauds, the credit card frauds, and especially right now something uh, quite new and very important is the traffic, the smuggling of cigarettes, illicit trade of tobacco. That's represented very important about right now about 10 million, 10 billion of euro a year you know, in Europe, that's a lot. Of course, this money was not used only by that. It's used by, you know, the criminals, by the, the, black, the black market. But it's uh, important resources. We have other counterfeit products also is quite used. You have many, many things like that. So that's the reason why it's very difficult for us, for the law enforcement, the judiciary, uh, even intelligence, to detect this flow because the exchange is by cash and don't you have no trace about that. That's a, a very big problem. That's the reason why it's very important, you know, to exchange information between the law enforcement agency inside the country and outside in order to detect and to, to, to staunch this money because if you succeed that, we have a very good blast, you know, to, to stop the uh, terrorist operation. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yesterday night's night old session was a very good opportunity uh, not only to visit what, what Rich Brigier um, just explained that the uh, organized crime terrorism nexus in a narrow sense in a, in a specific area but also in a, in a broader uh, context if, if, if you wish the, the, the meso and the, the macro level so uh, Latest research uh, shows we can talk about a crime instability nexus, right? W whereas in former times we thought like, okay, organized crime is organized crime, terrorism is terrorism. Now, with a third 
player, the so-called shadow facilitator or the fixers or the super fixers, um, we have a phenomenon which is much more dangerous. So it's about the proceeds of crime, the money, Jules Rosier was, was talking about, which is then going to enter in maybe legitimate uh, business, real estate, what, what, what have you, and it has a destabilizing uh, effect in transition countries, in post-conflict uh, countries, also in the Western Hemisphere. And some of uh, uh, the latest academics say this is undermining the understanding of sovereignty or the fa Westphalian state, if you, if you wish. And um, that, of course, uh, will probably hinder development. Um, look, just look at the figures where organized crime is or crime and the uh, human development index, you will find it matches. And this uh, danger we, we, we were able to, uh, to discuss yesterday night. Thank you very much. This is the space for your questions. Uh, good morning, Susanna Gabrija from New York Active. Uh, my question would be whether there are any indication that uh, some of the financing of terrorism in Europe comes from the finances that the smugglers of refugees are able to, to collect within the, the current refugee crisis. Yes, yes and no, be careful. We could have uh, some connections, but for me the connection is not the most important. The problem is manipulations. That's very crucial. Because it's not because we have discovered some three or four people who are involved, you know, in the Paris uh, attacks or Brussels, as a matter of fact. That means that all the refugee refugee is uh, the flow of refugee is the main stream, you know, to 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 uh, uh, conduct, you know, uh, uh, terrorists in Europe. So. But but you know, the problem that that Daesh Manipulate these systems in order to make, you know, to make, uh, to to uh, promote the terror feeling in Europe. That's a new tool of terror, and so we should be very prudent, of course, because because the manipulation of democratic order is uh, emphasized by the media. The media, of course, you know, focus about this problem, and and and, and the goal of that is to make, you know, is to make, uh, you know, uh, uh, that to make a disturb. In inside the, our society, and try to oppose you know, some you know clan in uh, and our peoples in our society in order to make uh, you know a big disturb. That's the goal, you know, to to break the consensus, the social consensus, you know, in our, our democratic order. That's the rule. So we should be very prudent about that. My, you know, that's a matter of fact and news. But in fact, I think it's one one person no more. The problem is elsewhere. But the manipulation is much more important. It's very dangerous. Okay, next question. Mr. Matschak. Thank you, Andrea Matschak, uh, David Pravda. Uh, could you please say a little bit more about this nexus you mentioned, uh, this organized crime terrorism and this third? Uh, because, uh, yeah, we have this discussion at Globsec, but. Uh, Correct me if I am wrong, uh, but I don't think this is like a really new phenomenon. Uh, so maybe it was evolving somehow, uh, and maybe a little bit more broadly. I don't know. I am writing about those issues. I don't know. Thirteen years, and of course we are always talking about the financing terrorism and stopping finance. So if can you can you say, for example, I don't know from the from 9/11, what happened? What uh, where are our successes? And and a little bit also about failures. Thank you. Okay. Juge um, Brigier will, will will tell you that the phenomenon is not new. What we believe in in, in, in the Marshall Center and, and and we have 700 students from the uh, security architecture from all over the world per year in our college. Uh, so there's a exchange also with. with practitioners from, from, from out there is the, the understanding maybe that the, the threat perception is, is new, if, if you wish. Yeah? Um, on, on this nexus, for instance, there is diamond mining somewhere yeah, in, in, in Central Africa, which is probably 
not done in the legitimate sense as we believe mining should should be done in, in, in our, our part of the world, then how do you get it out from there? You need a shadow facilitator. How do you get it ac across oceans? You need a sh shadow facilitator. And then the end user, uh, uh, the, the final destination. So there's, there's a sort of a hierarchy, yeah? but uh, ultimately this is, this is all in flux. And the security architectures are now about to understand it. There are international tools now on the table. Some are still in the, in the, in the drafting uh, process. Plus, as uh, Mr. Brugier pointed out, we need to cooperate more on that. We, we need to share information, not only state to state, but also the institutions inside the state, maybe also state public uh, sector and, and private sector, many, many, many players. Yeah? Um, ultimately, how do you fight a network? With a network. Yeah? And, and, and this, is, this is what we try to achieve. Okay, no, I agree. Now, cooperation is crucial right now. You know, we are, we are facing a global threat. That's a matter of fact, I don't know. But the response is too many fragmented right now, especially inside of the country because the connections sometimes is not sufficient between the intelligence, the police, you know, the law enforcement, the judiciary. You know, we have some connection quite to be difficult. And so the response, you know, is not uh, responsive. It's not, you know, we can't waste time in response. That's a very big problem. And the major problem for me is Europe. Europe, you know, is a big problem, as you know, because the cooperation is globally good. It's not a problem, there's no, no political itch for that. But in fact, practically speaking, it's much more complicated because it's, sort of, it's a set of sovereign states. The problem is sovereignty. As you know, you know, the problem of security, globally speaking, is only of the capitals of a member state, not the European Union. You know, Europol or Eurogist is just <coughs> to make cooperations. They are not, it's not an FBI system, you know, of course. And so the problem of cooperation is crucial. And you know, w what is important, for example, that each member state, I have experienced it in my, uh, when I was uh, you know, in Doty, and have his own you know, uh, perspective and experience in threat, in no perception of the threat. The perception of the threat in France was not the same you know, 10 years ago was in Spain, for Spain was important, it was uh, it there, it was the, problem, the Basque problems. UK was IRA, you know, remember that. So it's very difficult, you know, speakerly speaking, to have, you know, to have the same you know, intensity of, of, of detection for two, two or three threats. You focus on one and you can neglect the others. And the problem is, you know, if you do that, you undermine, in, you know, the global, you know, fight and, and the sending of battle with it. Because the terrorists have not this agenda. They, are, they use the global you know, the globality of Europe, they move very quickly from one state to others, thanks to the Schengen zone. And the problem, if you have not a global understanding and reactions in real time, we can, you know, we, we can succeed it in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we are short of time, so we have to finish. So I want to thank the gentlemen for being with us, and thank you for your attention. the last scheduled press conference. Let me thank you uh, for your attention, for cooperation, and thank you for your interest about Globsec, and I wish you a safe journey back home. <laughs>